week's parsha, we learn about the great virtues of the land of Israel, but what's really interesting is the example that the Torah states about the, what's considered the great virtue of Israel. The Torah compares and contrasts Israel to a country that the Jewish people were familiar with, and that is Egypt, where they recently left uh, prior to go ahead and uh, coming to Israel. The Torah says that in Egypt, the way things, vegetation would grow, fruits and vegetables would grow, is people would go ahead and plant something in the ground, and it would be irrigated from the source of the Nile, whereas in Israel, uh, the way things would grow is there was not a source of irrigation such as that, but rather we would go ahead and depend on the rain. Tar hashamayim tishtamayim. We will go ahead and receive rain from the heavens. And besides the fact that it seems like somewhat bizarre from all the great qualities that Israel has to offer, from all the virtues of this great and blessed land that the Torah seems to isolate this specific example, I would think that if someone was uh, posed the question, as a farmer, where would you rather be? Would you rather be in a land where you can just plant something and you have a natural source of irrigation, constant source of irrigation like the Nile, or go ahead and go into Israel where you have to go ahead and depend on rain? Sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. It's a source of anxiety every single year. What's going to be with the crops of the field? Maybe it won't rain this year. And up until today, throughout the world, when we depend on rain, we know that it's sometimes it's uh, very uh, anxious moments because we don't always receive that, uh, that blessed rainfall. So how is this considered a virtue for the land of Israel? I would think that it's much more opportune for someone to be in a topography that is similar to Egypt. I think this teaches us a great lesson. And what that is, that when it doesn't rain in, in Israel, what do people do? People begin to pray. And that's what God wants. He doesn't want to just start prayers because he wants people to call out to him. But rather, he wants a relationship with man. He wants a relationship with a human being. He wants to go ahead and connect with the human being and have that communication. And that's why Israel was virtuous, because we can go ahead and connect to God in that land more than any other lands in the world in a more meaningful and intense way. And of course, it's much easier to go ahead and uh, wake up every morning and see that your garden has been irrigated already. But sometimes the most easiest and most convenient way in life is not necessarily the most meaningful. Sometimes we have to go ahead and have spiritual connection as well. And that's what we receive in Israel. Folks, I think this lesson is very powerful, not only for people that live in Israel and are fortunate to live in Israel, but for all of us as well to realize that many times we can connect to God through our prayers and He yearns and desires our prayer so he can go ahead and have that connection with us as well. And we should always merit to have a meaningful connection with the Almighty. Have a wonderful Shabbos.